Hey guys, I'm Richard Garcia. I'm a multi-millionaire real estate investor. I've been investing in real estate for 10 years now and I have about $6.7 million worth of real estate. I have $2 million worth of debt and the rest is free and clear. So you're probably wondering, well, how the hell did this happen? Especially with this young guy, he doesn't even have facial hair. Well, I'll tell you, I'm 30 years old, I have a wife, three kids, and we live we live a great life. As you can see, this is my place here in Colombia. Uh, we've been here now for a few months and we're enjoying it. We have a great time, but it wasn't always like this. And I'm gonna share with you a couple of the experiences that I went through in order to get here today. Because you probably have an interest in wanting to build financial wealth. And the only way to do it is by hearing what others have done and learning from those mistakes or from those successes. So I'm gonna share them with you. The first thing I did was I traded stocks. I learned that I needed to be making 20 bucks more every day, 30 bucks more every day, 100 bucks more every day than what my salary was paying me and what my hourly rate was paying me because I was never gonna get there. It takes way too long to save money. So I needed to, instead of saving money, I needed to start making money. So I, early on, I started working at the bank. I worked at Bank of America during one of the worst times in financial history, 2008 to 2013. And between that time, I learned a lot, specifically how to trade stocks, how financial markets work, how the evolution of the financial uh, laws and regulations change. All these things were very important for me. And I think what was also really awesome was that I joined in 2008, the financial industry. So I didn't know anything prior to that, which allowed me to really understand what works today, not what worked back then. Now I used that knowledge to develop a strategy, trading stocks. And I was short trading stocks, meaning that I was betting against stocks that were coming down. I was betting that the stocks were coming down and then I was making money off of the stocks coming down. So I was borrowing shares from a broker, then using those shares uh, to bet against the stock and then as the stock would collapse, I would make money off of it. I started with blue chips, then I went into commodities, and then I went into penny stocks. Penny stocks had the highest risk, but it also had the highest reward. I'd put $2,000 down, I'd make $11,000 in a day. I got an account from $25,000 to a $600,000 portfolio in just a matter of a few short years. Once I got to that, I realized that I was doing a lot of work, more work than what I actually wanted to do. I was working every day, day and night, analyzing stocks, making sure that I was ready for the next day. I wasn't sleeping, I barely eating, and I was stressed beyond belief. So that's when I realized I needed to find a better strategy to make more money and put the money I already had to work. Making passive income. And what's the best method of making passive income? Real estate. So in 2011, I noticed that the market was still under, significantly undervalued. And so I invested in a tax auction property. I found online. How did I find it? A little bit of luck, a little bit of skill, a lot of determination. I found this property through a remote capacity, so I wasn't local. I leveraged a relative to go and look at the property and walk through it, send me pictures, and I thought it was a good deal. So for $150,000, I bought it. I put in $50,000 worth of work into it. The property was zoned multifamily, but it was only being used as a single family property. So I did something special, something that most people don't do. I decided to use value add on the property to convert it into a triplex, making more money from it. And that's what I did. It took me about give or take six months because I was new. I didn't understand what I was doing. And I ended up converting it. Started making passive income from that real estate project. The next year I bought a foreclosure, all cash. That property was also a good deal. And I started, I converted it into a duplex. It was a single family home. And that started making cash flow for me. I kind of left myself broke at that time. I was still a young guy. I was 22 years old. So I realized I had to go back to work. At that point is where I met my wife. We had our first child and I definitely needed to go back to work because real estate was making decent amount, but it wasn't making enough to support a family of three and pay for all the expenses that I needed. Plus I wanted more. I didn't want to just settle. So I realized technology was the industry that was blossoming. So I, I applied to a company in San Francisco called Tesla and I got the job. So I started working at Tesla in the engineering department, working for the recruiting team, very junior entry level recruiter, working with engineers, specifically software engineers and IT personnel. And I started climbing the ranks for three years. And as I climbed the ranks, I got to work with somebody that was profound to me, Elon. And I got to work on really cool projects and I built a really strong network. And in doing so, my focus was all on working. I didn't have any focus on real estate anymore. It was just money coming in and saved inside of my account. I lost myself for a little while. That was a big mistake because I prioritized my nine to five job over 
my goal, which was to really be financially free, have the financial independence for me and my family and to not have to work for the rest of my life. And so I left Tesla because it got to a point where I was doing 12 to 15 hours a day and I really didn't enjoy my time. And Tesla was also going through its ups and downs. And so when I moved into a company called Google, I was already kind of checked out of the nine to five life. I wanted more. I really didn't want to continue to work. So I started looking and I started sourcing through different books, real estate books on strategies. And one of them that I found was cash out refinances. And in particular, the Burr strategy, which is buying a property, rehabbing a property, renting the property out, and then refinancing the property, taking cash out to then go buy again. And I thought, man, that's a very interesting concept. I'm gonna need to learn more about this. I did more research and as I kept on doing more research, I realized it was a very viable option for me because I had good income, I had good credit, I had good savings, and I kind of knew my market within Florida, which was my old hometown. And I decided, you know what, I'm gonna buy in this area. So my first month back into real estate working at Google, I bought three properties at one time and I closed on all three simultaneous close in one day, $1.5 million worth of real estate. I then rehabbed the properties over a 60 day sprint, which was a lot of work. I added bathrooms and kitchens and fixed roof. Uh, I overspent on a lot of different things because I really didn't know what I was doing still. But I'd improved the values enough where I could do cash out refinances at the six month mark. So I reappraised the values of the properties, did a cash out refinance on all three, and then went and purchased more properties. So in 2018, I bought a couple more properties. And then again, more. By 2019, I had a portfolio of about 36 different units as of today and uh, $6.7 million worth of real estate that when I first started, I only had about maybe half a million dollars, maybe slightly a bit more. So things really took off for me in just a, a three year window from 2017, 2018, and then 2019, end of 2019. So the birth strategy was an amazing strategy that I used, but it had some flaws. It didn't have some aspects that I started realizing when I was purchasing real estate, which was it didn't have gentrification aspects. It didn't understand value add. Um, it didn't marry a lot of factors that you would need in order for the reappraisal to actually work and so that you can get the new values and what improvements you needed to make in the property in order to get those values to happen. These were things I had to learn by doing. Now I teach people the real estate fast track, which is the Burr strategy, but the 2.0 version of it. It's the new, more modernized version of an old, outdated system. And so that's what I'm doing. My goal today is to help as many people as possible buy real estate like I did at scale, not to just buy it bold and wait, but to buy and continue buying and repeat buying and repeat buying and recycling your money over and over again. So you don't have to keep on waiting for your savings to accrue. You just keep on force appreciating value in your properties and all the while still owning them and receiving cash flow at the same time. What else would you want? It's an amazing wealth machine. I wanted to take it a step further. So I took some things from Google and from Facebook and from Tesla that I worked at and I used this remote philosophy, which is we're in a digital age. You can use FaceTime and you can use Zoom and you can use all these different tools that allow you to communicate uh, from, lo from long distances. And you can use those tools in order for you to uh, still be digitally present. And that's what I did. So I built this entire portfolio from a distance, from San Francisco, almost 4,000 miles away from Miami, Florida, where all my real estate is located. So that's what I did, that's what I'm doing, and that's what I wanna to continue to do. And if you haven't already, I highly recommend, you know, leaving a comment down below so that uh, you can ask me any questions and I'll go ahead and answer them. And if not, you can always take a look at the other videos that I have located here in this channel 